Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Emerson and I love helping teachers with all things technology, organization, and productivity. If I had to choose one digital tool that has completely revolutionized my productivity, it would be Google Calendar. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step tutorial that will help you get started with Google Calendar. First, let's start by going over the buttons and toolbars. In the top left corner, you have the main menu button. This will expand or collapse that left menu. Then you have the Google Calendar logo and the today button, which will always bring you back to today's date. So even if you have navigated to previous days or weeks or months or future weeks, days or months, it will bring you back to today. Then you have the previous and next buttons. These will just cycle through whether you're in day mode, week mode, month mode, etc. It will take you to the previous and the next. This up here will tell you what current month, day, week you are looking at. Moving further over to the right, we have the search button. This will allow you to search for events within your Google Calendar. In order to exit, just click the left button on the side. Then you have the support button. This will allow you to get help from Google and the settings menu. We're gonna look at that in depth in the next part. Then you have your different views. So you can cycle between day view, week view, month view, year view, schedule view, which will just list your events on your calendar. It kind of deletes any blank space in between. A four day view. I'm gonna go back to the month and you also have the ability to show or hide weekends and show or hide declined events. The next button is just Google Apps where you can easily navigate to other Google applications and then you have your account. This sidebar can be shown or hidden using that arrow down at the bottom. Moving over to the toolbar on the left, the main menu. First, you have the create button. This will allow you to create an event, a task, or an appointment schedule if you have that setting. It is a premium feature. It's something you have to pay for, but if your Google account is through your school or district, you may have access to that. Then we have the mini calendar, which will show an overview of the month, and you can still navigate to previous or next months. Plus, if you click on any day, it will navigate you to that day. So for example, if I'm in day mode, I can navigate to the 27th and it will automatically jump there. Next, you have the search for people. This will allow you to search your contacts. Then you have your calendars. These are calendars you personally have created or have edit access to. You can show or hide them using the arrow. And then you have other calendars. These are calendars that you are subscribed to. So the events show up on your calendar, but you do not own the calendar. You didn't create it. Next, let's take a look at the settings menu. In order to get to the settings menu, I'm gonna click on the gear icon and then choose settings. You will notice it automatically defaults to my general settings and I have these headings here. When I click on it, it will automatically scroll me down to that section. I'm going to go back up to the top. You can set your language and region along with your time zone. I personally like to keep this checked where it says ask to update my primary time zone to current location. If you travel a lot, you may or may not want your Google Calendar to automatically update. So I always prefer for it to ask me so that I can decide in that moment what is best. You have the ability to show a world clock if that is of interest of you. And then you have your event settings. These are the default settings. Whenever you create a new event, this is what it will automatically have in there. Obviously you can change it for that specific event, but it is nice to set this up from the get-go with your most commonly used settings. So your default duration, you could set 30 minutes, 60 minutes, depends on how long your events typically last. I like to keep mine around 60 minutes. You also can turn on speedy meetings if a lot of your meetings do tend to end early. That's not the case for me, so I leave that unchecked. You also can set your default guest permissions and your settings for adding invitations to your calendar. And you can have it automatically add Google Meet conferences. So if you're doing a lot of virtual meetings, this would be a great setting to leave on. Next, you have your your notification settings. So if you are like me and you tend to forget what you have going on because there's just so much in your brain. Ah, my brain is ping ponging around in my head right now. You may want your Google Calendar to send you notifications. So personally, I really like to have desktop notifications and then I like it to show my snoozed events 
about five minutes before. So if I have snoozed a notification, I'm like, eh, I'm not worried about that. It will still remind me five minutes before. This is a terrific reminder. You can also have it play notification sounds and you can have it notify you only if you have accepted the meeting. So it will not notify you for any declined meetings. I personally like to keep that on because if I've declined it, I'm not worried about it anyway. Next, you have your view options. These first two are the same ones that we saw in that day, week, month view menu. So I personally like to have it show weekends, but not show my declined events. If you want, you can have it show week numbers. You can display shorter events the same size as 30 minute events. I typically don't have that many short events, so I don't worry about that. You can also have it reduce the brightness of past events. This is kind of nice because it keeps you on track of what's coming next and not getting bogged down with everything you've already done. You can choose what day you want the week to start on and you can set a custom view such as four days or even three or two days if that's of interest for you. And then you can have alternate calendars if needed. Next, we have events from Gmail. So personally, I love to keep this on. I do a lot of traveling. So when I book a flight, it will automatically place it on my Google Calendar. And for me, that's a huge time saver. Next, you have keyboard shortcuts. I love using keyboard shortcuts. They're a huge time saver. I'm gonna cover those in my next video where I share some Google Calendar hacks, but I always leave that checked. Next, we have offline. You have the ability to make your calendar available even if you do not have internet access. So personally, I love to keep that checked as well. Now for the other settings, we do have a button to add a calendar here. We're gonna come back to that in the next step. You also have the ability to import or export your calendar into different formats. So if you were previously using like Outlook Calendar and you want to take your Outlook Calendar and import it into Google Calendar, this would be helpful for you. I will link down below because I know this isn't of interest for everyone, but I will link some directions if that is something you are wanting to do. Then you have your settings for your individual calendar. So for example, I can click on pocket full of primary and I have some additional settings here, but again, we're gonna come back to this later on in the video. And you also have settings for other calendars that you are subscribed to as well. Now I'm gonna walk you through the steps for creating a new calendar. Personally, I love to have separate calendars for all the different areas of my life. So I have a YouTube calendar, a pocket full of primary calendar. I have a personal calendar. I have a shared calendar with my husband. All right, is that it? And it allows me to easily turn those calendars on and off so I can focus on just one area of my life at a time. Now, there are a few different ways you can create a calendar. For me, the easiest way when I'm in the main Google Calendar view is clicking this plus sign and then choosing create new calendar. But just to show you another way you could have gotten to it, I'm gonna go back. If I'm in the settings menu, over on the side, I have add calendar and I can choose create new calendar there. It's just two different ways to do the exact same thing. From here, I'm gonna give my calendar a name. So let's say I'm making a workout calendar. I can add a description if I want to. I personally don't because I've never really found that it's necessary and I can choose my time zone. It's going to default to your main time zone that you have in your settings. Then I'm just gonna click the blue create calendar button. It will take a few seconds. And now if I go back to my main calendar view, you will notice I have that calendar. I can click the checkbox in order to show or hide the events on my calendar. And if I click the three little buttons next to it, I can have it display only this calendar, hide from the list. So maybe I've created a calendar, but I don't want it to be displayed on there. I don't know, that is an option. You can also open up the settings for that calendar and you can choose a color. So maybe I'm gonna have a workout B, I already have red. What do I not have? I don't have green, we'll have it be green. So you can customize the different colors of your calendars in order to help you differentiate them. Next, let's go into editing a calendar. So getting the settings to be everything that you want. Once again, there's two different ways you can get to it. You can click the three dots next to it and choose settings and sharing. Or if you go back, you can go to settings menu, settings, select the calendar over on the left and it will open up the settings as well. The first few settings are the ones that you already set when you created the calendar. Underneath, you can auto accept invitations. So if someone sends you a calendar invitation, you can have it automatically accept it and put it on your calendar. Personally, I do not have that because I have not found that it's really helpful for me, but that might be helpful for you. 
you have the ability to make it available to the public. For most calendars, you're not gonna wanna do this, but if you created a calendar for your class, for example, and you wanna share it with parents, you would want to make sure that you have it available to the public so that they can view their calendar even if they are not subscribed to it. You also can invite specific people. So this will allow you to invite maybe team members and you're all gonna have a shared grade level calendar or invite other coworkers from your school. I'm gonna share more ideas of how you can use this setting in the Google Calendar Hacks video, which is coming next week. You also have the ability to add event notifications or all day event notifications for just that specific calendar. So maybe instead of having notifications for all your calendars, you only want them for certain ones. Then you can actually customize the notifications that you receive. So maybe you get notified when a new event is added or when an event gets changed. Personally, I always want email notifications when an event is changed or canceled. And then I also want it for email responses. So if I send an event to someone, I wanna know whether they accepted it or not. And you have the availability to have a daily agenda emailed to you with an overview of your events for that day. Next you have information about integrating your calendar. So this is helpful if you have maybe a class website, you can integrate your calendar on there. But again, I know this isn't of interest for everyone, so I will link some directions for you down below if that is something that you wanna do. And then finally, you have the availability to unsubscribe from the calendar or delete it. Now let's cover the steps for creating an event within your calendar. Once again, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can click on the create button and then select event. A little window will pop up or I'm gonna X out of that. You can click on the day where you want to add the event like so and it will pop up that window as well. Personally, that's my preferred method because it's just a little bit faster. From here, you're gonna give your event a title. So maybe this is leg day. <laughs> you also have the availability, instead of an event, you can create a task. This is actually going to add it to your Google Tasks list. So it becomes like a checklist item. So depending on what you're trying to add to your calendar, that may be helpful for you. But I'm gonna go back to event. From here, I have the availability to choose the date. So if it is just a single day, I'm already good to go. Maybe it's an event that spans several days. Maybe this is gonna go until Friday. I can't feel my leg. That sounds awful considering it's leg day. That is not what at all what I wanna do. So we're gonna go back to having it be just a single day. You have the availability to have it be all day or scheduled at a specific time. So maybe I'm gonna go tonight at 6 p.m. and it's gonna last until 8 p.m. So you can choose that specific time range you want it to be. You also can have it repeat. So if this is something you're gonna do every Wednesday or every other Wednesday or every first Wednesday of the month, you can put those settings in there. If you click the find a time button, it's gonna kind of dock this menu to the side toolbar and it's gonna open up just the day view so you can kind of analyze your schedule and figure out when it would best fit in. Then you have the availability to add guests. So if someone's going to join you on this event, for example, I could add in my husband, he will get a notification of the event on his calendar. You can also add a Google Meet video conferencing link. So if this is going to be a virtual meeting, it's great because you can integrate it right into the Google Calendar event. You can also add a specific location for the event. You can add a description, attachments. So if this is a meeting, maybe you can attach an agenda to it. You can change the calendar. So if you want it to be on a different calendar, you have that availability and you can change the color for just that specific event. So even though my workout calendar is green, I could make this event a different shade or a different color if I wanted to. I also can have it notify my calendar that I am busy during this time or that I'm still free. You can also change the visibility to be public or private and you can add a specific notification for this event. So maybe I want it to remind me 30 minutes before so I remember to get changed and then 15 minutes before so I remember to leave the house. <laughs> Once you have your settings, everything you want them to be, go ahead and click save and it will add it to your Google Calendar. Next, let's talk about how to edit an event. Let's say you've put an event on your calendar but you need to change the date or the time or some of the other settings. 
First of all, if you're just changing the date, let's say you're moving it to a future date, you can actually click and drag it to the date you want it to be moved to. So that's a really easy change. But if you need to change some of the other settings, you can click on the event, it'll open up a little preview, and then you can click the edit button. It looks like a little pencil. And then you have that same window that you saw before and you can go in and make any of the changes needed. Up at the top next to the save, you also have the more actions button. This will allow you to actually print the event, delete the event, duplicate the event. That one is a huge time saver. If you have meetings with a lot of the same settings, you can just duplicate it, change the date and time, and you can copy it to other calendars. So maybe you want it to appear on more than one calendar. You can just copy it from one to the other. You also can publish the event and change the owner. Once again, all your settings are in place. Go ahead and click save and it will update that event. Now, obviously there's a ton more you can do with Google Calendar. Those are just the basics to get you started. But in next week's video, we're gonna take it a step further and I'm gonna share some hacks that are specific for teachers that will save you time and allow you to really take your Google Calendar to the next level so that it increases your productivity. But if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.